you know, mad when not many people are at the door <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Yeah. All right. So, um, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to October and the October uh, Radical Exchange uh, Committee call. Uh, so, it's almost the end of the year, and uh, we have a lot of updates uh, for um for the annual conference uh, that's coming up uh but uh before uh, we do that we're gonna um, proceed with uh, a few introduction and uh and so uh as we always uh, welcome uh newcomers uh i also uh before i ask everybody uh, if that's their first time uh, i want to uh, welcome uh, Paula Berman, uh, who uh, is joining uh, the uh, foundation team. And uh, um, yeah, I don't know, Paula, if uh, if you're here or if you can uh, uh, can hear us. But uh, um, there you go. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Um, I wasn't prepared for. Sorry, I put you on the spot. <laughs> no worries. But um, yeah, uh, just maybe I can introduce myself uh, quickly. I'm Paula. I'm from Brazil. And I have just joined Radical Exchange a couple of weeks ago, have been kind of close to the community and, and to the foundation for many years, though. Um, just watching from, from the sidelines and collaborating whenever I could and really excited about the work that has been conducted here. Um, my background is both in, in civic tech and um, also working with blockchain technology and trying to understand, trying to pioneer some new uh, governance and, and identity systems uh, with blockchain networks. And yeah, I'm excited to, to get started. Still uh, have just joined and kind of uh, finding my way around, but um, hope to be doing a lot of work with this community and helping um, Radical Exchange grow and reach the full potential that I know that it can reach. Um, and looking forward to, to be working with this community, you know, in different um, quadratic voting, quadratic funding, pilots, uh, salsa, all of that. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, if you um, have any questions, want to reach out, um, I'm here and I'll add my email in the chat. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say how, uh, how lucky we are to be working with Paula and how excited we are. Um, um, that she has been able to join the team. I mean, pa Paula's really been, uh, she's, she's modest, but she's been one of like the leading, uh, leading thinkers and, and activists and motivating forces between, uh, behind a, a ton of, you know, the most interesting uh, civic tech stuff, blockchain governance stuff, uh, digital identity work that's been going on over the past uh, several years, and we're uh, incredibly uh, delighted to, to be working together. Likewise. All right, uh, and um, I also wanted to ask uh, if um, for anybody here today, if it's uh, your first uh, Radical Exchange community call, uh, or if any of you want to uh, introduce uh, yourself. Uh, it's really a time where we connect, so uh, don't be shy. Or in the chat, if you're shy. <laughs> I'll go. I'll reach out. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Allison Hauser. I'm located in St. Petersburg, Florida. I'm a remote graduate student with Northwestern University. Um, in clinical mental health counseling. And most recently, I have been studying and publishing about um, psychodynamic analysis and how we can relate that to COVID-19 response to public mandates um, in both citizen and um, like meso level nationwide. So um, like insecure attachment, activation and defense mechanisms um, as a response to authority, um, coordinated public health response, that kind of thing. 
Uh, that's what I've been working on lately. I'm also part of the neuroscience lab and I'm working on some artificial intelligence um, chatbot discussions, mental health chatbots. Um, big previous background in fine art and design up in New York with DIS Collective and Parsons. So um, yeah, that's a brief summary. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Very diverse background. Uh, like um, it's uh, quite something that a lot of people here have like really brought uh, a lot of different uh, view on like like you know subjects and and to me this is very much what makes the um, the wealth of uh, of that community and uh, uh, and yeah um, anybody else thank you Alison sorry. <laughs> Uh, so maybe I can introduce myself. So yeah, but uh, because I can see that in agenda is uh, it's about us. Uh, so we started a new chapter in in Poland, Europe, <laughs> not not in the United States, and uh, it's it we are based in Krakow. So we had like first uh, first meeting about uh, first chapter um, radical of radical markets uh, about partial. Uh, a common ownership and uh, yeah <laughs> we yeah we hope we, we we will grow because yeah right now it's about five people <laughs> so thank you Inyazi. uh to tell you the funny story why um yes precise europe is that uh, i created a, a channel in the uh, discord server like poland but i put it in the section uh, north america uh, and yeah. it's, it's very uh, frustrating because I'm actually a quarter Polish, so yeah, I know where Poland is. <laughs> so apologies for the misplacement of Poland. <laughs> no worries, but but that's kind of funny. <laughs> um, great. Um, anybody else? No, no. Like it doesn't have you don't have to be new like, to um, you know like uh, tell us about uh, your projects and 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 or your chapter. Yeah, so I'm in Toronto. I think I've, you said you don't have to be new. So I've been here before yeah. and I'm from Effective Altruism. So involved in a whole bunch of things there. One of them completely random, probably nothing you guys are involved in is the Alliance to Feed Everyone in the Event of a Disaster, All Fed. So if there's anybody who's uh, really into open source hardware or anything like that, there is a prof at Western um, here in uh, London, Ontario, I guess, who has a strong background in that. And so he's hiring a bunch of PhDs. So uh you know, if that's, uh, you know, he's looking for those types of people. Um, yeah, and other things around uh, trying to get um, forest products into usable food in case of a massive disaster. Don't know if that relates to the stuff you guys are doing, but probably important in light of a pandemic. Yeah, um, definitely. I think there's um, uh, also I wanted to point out, I don't know if uh, many people know on the Radical Exchange uh, website, there's actually a, a community uh, page uh, where you can actually uh, post your, um, if you have, um, you know, if you're looking for people to work on a project or like a specific uh, job you're trying to uh, to feel like this is um, quite uh, useful uh, sometimes. Uh, and uh, let me put it in the chat. Uh, and uh, uh, super, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It, I lost you for a second. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, so there have been a few uh, intros uh, in uh, the chat uh, as well. So. Uh, definitely encourage you to, um, you know, like read them and say hi to Ben and Ted. And, um, and yeah, like, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Like, this is not like, you know, <laughs> like a mandatory, like you have to speak in public. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so um, anybody else uh, not in the chat uh, would like to uh, say something? Yeah, so oh, go ahead, Spencer. Yeah, I'll just quickly go. I'm a fresh graduate from UC Santa Cruz, where I studied computer science. My main background, though, was in like ethical algorithms, fairness, AI, privacy, machine learning, that kind of realm. And I'm just looking for ways to get involved and really agree with everything that this community is bringing up. 
So yeah. Spencer, did you know uh, Liz Gator at uh, Santa Cruz? Yeah, she's like the most badass professor I know. Yeah. Uh, I actually cool. was able to um, do undergrad research with her and I TA'd the class with her. Um, so I'm actually really close with her. She's awesome. Did you find out about radical exchange from her? Uh, no, I didn't. But she was bringing up ideas about data dignity in okay. her ethical algorithms class, which was like revolutionary. So um, yeah, she's awesome. She's totally awesome. Yeah, I haven't talked to her in a while, but I should I should catch up with her. She's uh, she's she's great. Is, are you guys the reason Hassan Minaj got canceled? Is it because the banana slug mafia went after him? for the things he said to Ezra Klein. It's got to be that, right? Because there's this whole beef between him and Ezra, Ezra Klein. It was kind of hilarious, but uh, love you know, it, UC, uh, SC. It's an amazing place. Really, really. Great. Uh, well, actually, on uh, on AI, there's uh, um, something we we are looking to, uh, to start. It's uh, on top of... Um, geographically located uh, uh, chapters is a uh, scene based uh, chapters uh, uh, such as AI because uh, in the communities there are a lot of people uh, who are working in the field and uh, um, and you know like I mean especially now like it doesn't really matter if we meet in person on, or you know or in zoom I think we all got used to uh, to the online uh, meetings so uh, so that's even more uh, relevant uh, now, but um, yeah, more to come. Um, great. I, I think there's uh, um, also anybody else? Yeah. Hi. Hello. I mean. Yeah. Uh, hi, Penny. Uh, so I just wanted to add that um, maybe um, the uh, the article that is uh, present available on Radical Exchange website, the philosophy of Radical Exchange. Maybe we can think about uh, turning those ideas in and present them in video form in some sort of um, solar punk or like um, uh, um, videos that can uh, help us set the vision of what we think, how uh, if uh, these ideas are actually uh, implemented, the how the society would look like or um, what the future would look like. And uh, if anyone wants to um, like collaborate in such project, I would like to also help. So that's it. Yeah, this is a, a great idea. I'm actually uh, gonna ask uh, uh, Jen, uh, who, uh, who has been uh, working on, you know, change, like presenting pretty much like, and I don't know if it's the same thing you have in mind, but presenting the concepts of uh, radical exchange, so quadratic voting, quadratic funding, um, and uh, into explainer videos, animated uh, explainer videos. Yeah, yeah, not just explainer video, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, okay, I, I would agree, just, not just explainer videos, but it is yeah. something engaging, it could even be yeah, as, um, some, like as if the world existed like that or some, yeah. some fictional narrative story. So that we can, people can actually compare it with uh, the present world and yeah. be motivated to change to that and uh, what would the cost be and what would the benefit be we can like people would have that in mind and it would be easy for them to grasp the radical exchange ideas because uh, like uh, how we actually conceive of where we, we should change to uh, like how radical exchange can like these ideas would be easily available to them not just in those particular ideas but um, like how ideas like those can be implemented in other um, domains of the world. Amit, um, Joe Lemke is also on the call and we've been working together in that kind of way to develop stories okay. like this. And we're, we're at a different point with the story that he's developed. Um, but that's, that's what we do. And at the moment, since we're planning for the conference, there's the possibility to do some of this kind of collaboration so if you want to just write me yeah that can be presented in conference yeah but it it depends because that's it can be if like you really want to make it into the if it's animations or 
um, like an illustration or something, or even just in literature format in a way, or a script, then that's doable. But in terms of actual production, that that's, that's there a was a question. video that we can take as a difference of uh, like uh, from Alexandria or Casio Cortez and. Um, there, uh, it was uploaded, uploaded on YouTube and the Intercept channel. I can uh, upload the uh, link here. If you yeah, if you can do that. And yeah, then um, and then we can connect separately. Yeah. After I have your email. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I and if anybody uh, else is interested, you. yeah. Um, yeah. Jennifer at radicalexchange.org. Thanks, Amit. Sorry, I'm a slow typer, typing Jen's email. Um, uh, yeah, so this is uh, definitely part of the uh, of the upcoming months uh, and uh, um, like creating uh, this, but um, in in line for the conference and uh, and for larger uh, use after that. Um, in terms of uh, chapters, uh, we also have uh, on the call we have Ryan. Uh, with relaunching the um, Bay Area um, chapter, and uh, uh, Ed, I'll let you give you an update. Give us an update on the upcoming event. All right, thanks a lot, Fanny. I know we can only see about half of you, uh, but other than Matt and I, is anyone else in the Bay Area happen to be? I don't know, Spencer. I know you're at UC uh, SC. Maybe you'll be up here. Well, um, yeah, for those of you who know folks in the Bay Area, we're going to restart the chapter. Uh, hopefully over time we can start to, because the Bay Area is a very, very big place, we can start to, all right, I see in Oakland there in the chat, it just popped in. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll actually have, you know, individual chapters throughout the, the, Bay, the greater Bay Area. But we're going to start getting everybody together, try to pick, well, we try to pick a central location, although we kind of picked a location close to both Matt and I, because uh, we both live in Oakland. Um, so we're going to do it at Mad Oak. It's uh, like a two block walk from the Lake Merritt Park Station. So it should be pretty easy to get to from folks from SF uh, and uh, further down, at least on the East Bay side. Um, we're going to get together the, uh, the 19th. So two weeks from yesterday. Uh, more details to follow. I'm going to put it out in the Discord. Uh, I'll throw my email out here too uh, in the chat before we go uh, if you guys have any questions. But we're really excited to um, start bringing folks together. I know we're uh, as Fanny said, we're getting very good and, and, and comfortable at, you know, the Zoom stuff we've been doing for the past two years. Uh, but I don't think there's anything uh, like actually being able to sit there, speak to face to face, uh, start mingling, start again talking about things like, hey, how do we start educating, um, you know, our peers and the public, um, like Amit was talking to and Jennifer's working on. Um, so yeah, we would uh, love to see you and to spread the, the word as well to um, people in the Bay Area that, uh, uh, you think might be interested. It's good for introverts, online meetings. <laughs> and you can wear sweatpants, two advantages. <laughs> but no, 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 this is exciting. Uh, that's, uh, that's coming up. Uh, and um, and if, uh, like I put back the, in, uh, the invitation to the Discord, uh, servers, there's, um, oops, sorry, I sent it to a meet only. Um, uh, there's, uh, you can uh, just put like uh, request if you, if you want like a, um, a channel uh, for a specific uh, chapter, uh, even if there's none uh, started there just to uh, gather uh, people, that's a good way, um, like central way to, um, to kind of find other uh, other people. There actually was a question of uh, if you, any of you knew um, anybody from the radical exchange um, community in Hamburg, uh, Germany. Um, uh, I think there were a few uh, folks uh, interested. So um, if you know someone who's in Hamburg who might be interested, uh, let me know. And, uh, but um, yeah, I think that's, uh, uh, that's exciting. And Anything else uh, related to uh, chapters uh, for the call before we we move on? Okay, um, perfect. Uh, so moving on, um, there's 
um, two subjects that were uh, submitted to the agenda. Um, and um, going back to, uh, to Ryan uh, to talk about uh, the first one, uh, which was about cannabis legislation in California and, and using QV uh, for, for that. So love to hear more uh, about, about that, Ryan. Yeah, thanks again, Fanny. Um, so yeah, first of all, I want to say you know, thank you to Matt and Alex and Paula, who have already been really essential in, uh, in getting this started. Uh, a little bit of background. So I've worked in the uh, California cannabis industry and um, the regulations that legalized it, everyone was very excited back in 2016. They thought this was the beginning. And it was in many ways the beginning of, of a lot of different, at least in the U.S. states and actually internationally as well. Uh, starting to promote this and legalize this industry. Um, the problem is the, the process to create the regulations uh, definitely was not the most democratic one out there. And unfortunately, it did not get the input um, from a lot of the different stakeholders from industry to cities um, that was really needed to craft a um, healthy, successful set of regulations. So just so you know, I think 80, about 80% of all cannabis transactions that happen in the state of California are still in the illicit market. Um, so they're not being captured by this taxable market. Very fortunately, they're not um, prosecuting individuals to the extent they were and destroying families, particularly those black and, black and brown families that were uh, disproportionately affected. So, you know, there's a positive there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's not a very healthy industry. And um, a lot of it has to do with this regu the regulation. So, um, I was part of a group that uh, earlier this year, we were targeting 2024, uh, that were looking to change the regulations, um, uh, again, just to make them just much better public policy to capture all that, you know, income that can be taxed. Um, uh, and also, you know, from, uh, I'm a veteran, I'm a U.S. military veteran, so it's a veterans organization, and, you know, to look out for our constituent uh, veterans uh, who oftentimes use this, you know, very seriously as medicine. Uh, so we, a uh, group of veterans, got together and started, um, they're already an, an existing uh, uh, organization, uh, Lead for Warriors, that uh, is uh, probably one of the leading um, uh, communities for veterans, you know, centered around cannabis. And we said, okay, let's bring the state, you know, we're a very good, um, I guess, arbiter of all these different stakeholders and ideas, being that we, you know, we have no incentives here other than creating a very healthy industry for our constituent group. So, um, you know, we're not in it for the money. We're not in it for any kind of cannabis power or anything like that. Um, and we started bringing together this very, very diverse set of stakeholders, which again goes everything from industry itself to the actual, you know, consumers, both medical and just average Californians to city, uh, local municipal governments, state governments. And we said, all right, let's, we think we could be the, the, the kind of the, the unifying force that is able to take all the, uh, the inputs onto how we need to fix these regulations from their perspectives um, to then take it to the voters. Because in order to change the, the, the laws, um, we're going to have to go back to the voters like we did in 2016. Uh, so it became pretty obvious early on that you know, everyone wanted to work. Everybody recognizes this is an issue. Um, but as we started getting into it, all the friction lines really started appearing, um, which is why we haven't had much successful um, you know, regulatory change uh, since 2016 when this came in. And the problem is there's just, uh, you know, a lot of stakeholders are very emotional about this. They worked very hard. I mean, going all the way back to, you know, 2010, there was a Prop 19 uh, that was put on the ballot that narrowly failed. Um, so you had a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And a lot of people sacrificed a lot. And um, because of that, you know, they, it's, it's very challenging for folks to work together. Um, and also very challenging for folks to really reveal their true preferences and not have to take an extreme position. Um, so, you know, as I started getting in, involved in the radical exchange community, I realized, well, this is probably a really good use case for, um, you know, a, a consensus building mechanism such as quadratic voting, where people can more accurately and democratically voice their preferences, especially when you have a very disparate group of stakeholders. Um, so we're very early in the process now. Uh, again, like I said, thanks to um, uh, Matt, Alex, and Paula, we've already uh, kind of ideated, had a couple of calls, and we're building out a pilot program right now. Um, it's going to look pretty much exactly like the RxC Voice, um, which is you know perfect. That makes it a lot easier. Uh, that was run this past summer, 
um, with the ultimate goal of creating a, um, a really, really broad, robust, um, technologically driven, so we can get maximum stakeholder participation, again, including you know, the public, that is the ultimate people are gonna vote on this and also are the most affected by this um, in order to build, actually build a ballot proposition um, to put on the ballot for 2024 here in California. Um, so yeah, if anybody, again, like my, my email is up there for the, uh, for the Bay Area chapter. If anybody is interested in helping out or learning more, um, you know, we'd love, uh, love to speak with you. So thanks. Super, thank you, uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, any, uh, um, yeah, Matt, any any comment or uh, any? Um, no, other than just you know, really excited to be working with um, with Ryan and with this organization. I think I think it's a it's like a um, a really uh, great use case for radical exchange tools in general and radical exchange voice and sort of stitching together all of these different techniques. Uh, because if we succeed, it will sort of show the, it will you know, be a great demonstration of the ability for these kinds of decision-making tools and deliberation tools to organize, uh, organize large groups of people for, for sort of political action and, um, uh, and empowerment, uh, which, is, which is, really, um, uh, which is really what we want to happen, right? We want, we want these things to be uh, to become sort of connective tissue for bottom-up organization, and you know, really excited to to be working on this to to help um, help help demonstrate how that could work, and hopefully inspire a lot. You know, hopefully get something done in terms of policy in, in this important area, and also inspire other other uh, um, uh, activist groups to to do likewise. Thanks. Uh, thanks. So um, I think if we continue on uh, on projects, just wanted to ask uh, if um, anybody had a project they were working on or uh, some things they had questions about. Um, I think that would be a good time. Um, in the meantime, uh, I also wanted to share uh, event-wise, like there's um, a conference uh, next week, or like the 20th to the 20, no, not next week, in two weeks, uh, like the 20th to the 22nd, uh, called Decidim uh, Fest, uh, which is happening in Spain, uh, but it's, it's all online. Uh, and uh, we're actually uh, able to do a presentation or a workshop on uh, how uh, quadratic voting uh, helps and, uh, and explain uh, more uh, about it. Um, Matt, did you want to say something about Decidim or Jen? Um, just to feel like <laughs> you might be able to make a better uh, description than I am. Sure. Um, um, Decidium is uh, Decidium is a is it's an interesting uh, uh, technical you know set of technical tools and also a community um, that is quite aligned with with radical exchange. Um, they they've built a, um, a a sort of a modular suite of civic engagement tools that has been used in places like Barcelona and elsewhere um, to do different sorts of participatory democracy initiatives. Um, we are, uh, we're in touch with them to integrate some radical exchange ideas into some of the tools that they've built for, for example, participatory budgeting. Uh, we're working with, uh, like, we're working with an organization in New York right now, which is involved in like New York City's participatory budgeting efforts um, to, to help make that happen. And, um, uh, yeah, and just generally kind of quite excited to be collaborating with the CDM in integrating some some ideas into their platform. And um, uh, I think the CDM Fest is going to be a great place to connect to like a, a, a pretty, uh, pretty exciting international community of, uh, of people who are working on, on civic tech in a, in a serious way. For US-based uh, folks, uh, it's going to be very early. <laughs> just, uh, just saying. Um, thank you. Um, any other events uh, that you'd like to share or that you're organizing um, in the coming future? 
Anybody? I think the complexity weekend, Matt's thing about bottom-up organizing is totally their jam. So I think I mentioned it to Alex before. If anybody from your organization wants to show up and talk about the stuff you're doing, it'd probably be a good good place to do it. Yeah, we would we'd love to 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 be there, Alex. Um uh I I was looking into it the other day and it looks like a looks like a, a great, great uh forum, a great, great group of people. Um so uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the best way to participate is, but we can we can talk offline about it and would love to. Um, um, it's mostly just or... they don't do orgs. They just do individuals. So just show up as yourselves and talk about yourselves personally and okay. you know, stuff. You... Terrific. Yeah, well, uh, well, I'll be there then. Super. Uh, maybe that's a good segue to um, um, give a, a few updates uh, about the um, annual Radical Exchange Conference um, that is coming up in December. And that, um, I don't know if Matt or Jen or Angela, you want to start? You got it. <laughs> um, thanks, Fanny. So we have decided to do the next annual conference on in December. And given the challenges with global climate change and as well as the global pandemic, we've decided to, instead of trying to get everybody in one place, that we're going to do it across three locations. So there will be one in Taipei on December 4th, one online, on December 10th and one in Denver, Colorado on December 17th. And the theme of the conference this year is new era of democracy. And that's why we specifically couched it with um, Taipei and Colorado with all the work that's been got done in both places. And we are also doing something a bit different. It's not gonna be a program that we're putting together. We're not dictating what we think everybody should talk about or listen to, we're going to do open space technology on conference. And all of this information is now on the website. Um, no, the FAQ. Well, it will be, we'll, we'll let you know when, when the launch is happening, but to the radical exchange community, we're going to open it up before we open it up to the broader public. Um, so that just means that you, if you can come to one of the Thanks, Fanny. If you can come to one of them, uh, either in person in Taipei or Colorado, Colorado might change to online, but we'll give enough advance notice, um, or to the online one. We hope we've made it accessible for everybody. You bring yourself there. It's um, going to be facilitated and very well explained, and there'll be a, a circle to get to know and everybody and feel relaxed and kind of talk about the issues or the topics that you really want to talk about and in the way that you want to. Um, another thing that we're doing is RxC TV. And so this is a program we're putting together that is going to be three hours before the day before each of the, the conference days <clears throat> or unconference days. And this is going to be broadcast online. So YouTube, most likely, and on our website. Um, but this is a program where we're creating content that are, some might be in the form of talking heads, but more like real TV style. So if there's anybody out there, I'm going to reach out to some people specifically, but if you think that you're working on something that's really aligned or, or actually using radical exchange concepts or fits in this theme of like a new era of democracy, participatory democracy, getting people to work together and organize and be more self, self-reliant and self-determining, then <clears throat> please reach out with that project. Um, and if you have experience with animating, filming, any kind of like production, post-production also, or a co-producer, if you're interested in that, please also reach out to me at jennifer at radicalexchange.org. Otherwise, we'll let you know that all of this is happening and look forward to having you participate. Yeah, and uh, and 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 the definitely more detail coming about around the unconference concept, uh, because um, I was actually very surprised to uh, learn that there are many rules uh, to the unconference to really 
uh, uh, makes them work and it's uh, it's quite exciting. I don't know how many of you have, have participated to uh, an unconference and specifically an open space technology unconference. Uh, but this is a uh, kind of a uh, extremely interesting uh, uh, format and uh, um, where like meaningful discussions really happen um, thanks to like framework rules, uh, but then uh, discussion is really brought by the participants. Um, so we're very excited about that. Angela, Paula or Matt, any other comment or Alex? Um one uh w just one quick thing is is so i think the the because we haven't publicly announced it yet the page isn't is is like it's like unlisted but you can go you can check out our our sort of early version of the conference page right at the link that i just gave you and um uh and you can also go ahead and reserve a ticket um using the password RXC exclamation mark, which I just uh, I just dropped right there. So, um, so if you want to, so um, if you're, you know, basically if you're in the, I don't think there's anyone uh, from Taiwan on this call, but uh, if you are in the vicinity of Denver, Colorado, um, um, sign up for it. I would love to see you there. There's going to be a great community that kind of bridges the um, the Colorado government community is with the uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, kind of forward thinking blockchain communities of, of Gitcoin and ETH Denver, um, and uh, as well as, you know, a, a bunch of other interesting activist groups connected to the University of Colorado. And, um, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a kind of a, a amazing intersection of a bunch of different interesting radical change aligned uh, communities in, in Denver. So we're really excited about who's going to be there and we'd love to have um, have you all there. And if you're not in the Denver area, um, December 10th, uh, you can still you know sign up and join us for the uh, for the online uh, on conference on December 10th. Um, and finally, uh, we, we've we've tried to make the prices really reasonable. Uh, you can uh, there's like a general price and a student price. Uh, feel free if the if the price is, is prohibitive in any way. Just first of all, you don't actually have to be a student. Just sign up for student ticket if the if the other one's too expensive, and we're not checking that. And if you want to, um, if it's still prohibitive, uh, reach out and we'll uh, we'll send you a discount code. So um, yeah, super excited about about this. I think it's going to be a great um, a great opportunity to basically uh, basically test out ideas, basically you know connect with other other interesting uh, people who are thinking about the sort of reform of basic institutions, the future of democracy, the future of of political economy, and um, uh, you know the the way that I'm the way that I'm hoping people use, I mean, people can sort of use the open space format in any number of different ways, but I'm really hoping that people use it to sort of like work out ideas, you know, think about, um, you know, what can we do to make the, you know, criminal justice work better? What can we do to make real estate markets fairer? You know, whatever it may be, all these different, um, you know, from all these different angles, all these different uh, areas of, of uh, all these different issue areas that the radical exchange community has a lot to say about. Uh, it's a great place to sort of uh, uh, try out ideas and hopefully build collaborations and come out of the project with, um, uh, with impetus for, for exciting new projects. So thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, and um, uh, yeah, de definitely don't feel uh, uh, bad if you're not next to Denver or Taipei like this. Uh, we're working with uh, people who've, who have um, really uh, worked uh, with a lot of unconferences online um, using this tool like Kiko Chat, but really um, more than the tool, it's it's more the setup that they're um, doing with us. So uh, this is uh, quite uh, quite exciting. Angela, anything else we're forgetting?
Um, if you need a, a primer in uh, discussing like a conference stuff, we did just have a live talk last week. Um, that'll be posted to our YouTube soon. So uh, look out for that on Twitter and I'll probably link it in the newsletter. So thank you. Great. Um, and uh, uh, in the meantime, while we were talking about the conference, Pat, uh, do you want to uh, talk about what you posted in the chat uh, in terms of uh, uh, event? Even if it's not your event, I don't know if you're still here. Ah, mobile right now. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just going to uh, put that uh, back at the bottom of the chat so everybody uh, can uh, read your message and I can't copy and paste, but I, when I will, I will do. Um, at that point, we are 15 minutes uh, left. I think uh, uh, if um, uh, if there's a, um, kind of want to open it uh, for uh, questions, uh, remarks or comments uh, from uh, everybody after this update. No question. So I guess, um, I mean, I do encourage everybody to, it's fascinating how the unconference uh, um, is uh, structured. So um, like when Angela posts the live talk from uh, last week, it's uh, it's quite a fascinating uh, world uh, to be honest that, uh, uh, and we're very excited to, uh, to bring that to Radical Exchange. And uh, um, yeah, I think, I mean, you know, if, we, if we're done with, any everything i think uh uh we can you know end early and have 15 minutes just a second yes hi yeah hi hi uh i, I was talking regarding updating rad exchange website uh, by bringing online degree online courses and yeah free courses in it regarding quadratic voting etc because people aren't aware of it and we can bring bring a bring a bring something for like a job like uh, Alex Alex wanted for PhDs. So we can connect more members through job as well through Rad Exchange platform. Yeah, I think this uh, uh, it's uh, definitely on the education side. Uh, uh, I think Matt, like if uh, if you have, uh, um, I mean. We've been working with some uh, educational um, uh, like resources and and, uh, and other uh, organizations uh, to provide more uh, education around uh, around the concept and the, the stories, uh, but definitely needed. And yeah, we had a few latecomers, so I don't know if uh, there's uh, anything. Uh, um, that uh, anybody else uh, wanted to say or introduce themselves uh, before um, before we end. Uh, what, one thing I was saying, just um, just quickly, um, I'll say a, a, a quick word about what uh, what open space technology is and what the sort of unconference idea is, because I'm sure not everybody is familiar. Um, so the idea. Uh, the idea behind like an unconference or uh, as, as we're calling it an open space event is essentially that um, th there's sort of a, this is like a sort of a, a practice for attendee led uh, conference organization that has been refined over the course of, uh, I don't know how many years, but at least like a couple decades, there's been a community of people that have, that have really refined sort of a set of, of norms and rules for, um, uh, structuring events in which the attendees are able to essentially call their own sessions and lead their own sessions. Um, and so that, you know, everyone, when you're at an open space event, you are uh, kind of freely moving between different sessions that have been called by other attendees. Um, and th there's, um, it would take a while to kind of, to sort of really get into the philosophy behind it, but there is essentially a the sort of the kind of set of rules around it uh, that is clearly communicated to everyone, you know, which includes the includes the idea that, for example, uh, 
you know, you, you should just go to whatever you, whatever session interests you at any given time. Uh, you shouldn't feel uh, captive by any session. So for example, if, if, if you're not getting anything out of a particular session that you're in, uh, you can leave it and, and go to another one. And that's sort of like an, an accepted practice within the, within the format. And that, you know, that's an example, one of these norms that has interesting positive consequences for the way that the conversations go. Because what it means is that, is that at any given time, anyone who's in a session definitely wants to be there. Nobody's just sitting there because they're being polite, right? So there's, so there's, this, there's a, you know, a constant feeling that whether you've got a large group or whether you've got a small group in a, in a session, um, everyone is committed to it. Everyone's engaged, everyone's participating. And, um, and it ends up just working out quite beautifully. Like, so for example, if you have a, if you have a large group, you know, that typically means that everyone is, everyone's interested, right? There's just some, you know, something's being discussed that interests a large group of people. And so that's, that's great. The smaller sessions often end up being even more exciting than the big ones because they're intimate. Uh, you can get three or four people talking really, really deeply about something in a much more interactive way that isn't possible in the larger sessions. And these small sessions often result in uh, powerful new relationships, uh, you know, really rapid refinement of ideas. Um, and so it's this, it's this kind of um, dynamic uh, beast that ends up being really, um, uh, uh, really interesting and, and, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're super excited to, to, to try it out as a way of, of um, you know, uh, organizing a radical exchange conference. And um, yeah, just wanted to sort of give you a sense of, of, uh, of what that is, if you're not familiar. And actually, uh, there is one uh, coming up uh, next week, right? Like that Kalia, uh, Young, uh, and Heidi are organizing. Um, I don't know if anybody has the link, but um, that could be interesting. Um, it, yeah, so that's the, it's called the Internet Identity Workshop. Um, we are, we're working with the longtime organizers of the Internet Identity Workshop to, uh, to sort of facilitate and lead the uh, open space aspect of this event, uh, or these plural events. Um, and um, uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, if you're if you're interested in sort of getting a flavor for what open space events are like, um, you could um, check out the Internet Identity Workshop next week, which is also a great um, a great kind of place to meet interesting people and and learn about uh, what the um, digital identity community in uh, Silicon Valley is is thinking about these days. Knowing that every uh, conference is very different from each other, so um, yeah. not replicable exactly. But um, um, so, um, um, I had a question. Yeah, um, I was wondering: Do we have a page or a resource somewhere of books or maybe other groups that are interested in the same sort of topics as Radical Exchange, but maybe they have some different ideas about institutional reform? We've got a. We've, do we still have the that reading list up on the student? On the, the student one. Yeah. One that the students put together. Um, I. We had it up, but. Well, I think it has been like uh, pretty much on the concept pages on the on the website. Under each con each concept, there is like a reading list and other uh, projects that. Um, or working on uh, the same thing. So um, there's a lot of, it's more like readings and tools uh, that, yeah. um, uh, and other projects that work in the, in similar, um, like with similar subjects. Uh, I'll just give you one example. Here. Yeah, Andrew, I just put in um, the example on yeah, radical antitrust. I think before it was one just long page with everything and not split up. And so we've divided it into each concept page, the one, but it, so it's a lot of reading. You'll have to find like 
make the connections yourself. We don't have it organized in a way. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I guess I was thinking more like, are there other groups that have kind of um, very different approaches or ideas to the same sorts of problems of how to make governance better? Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm kind of trying to see if there's like, uh, it doesn't um, seem like there's that many groups who are interested in this topic. I was wondering if you guys do, knew. Do you, you know, know Nathan Schneider? And there's the exit to community. I mean, that's a bit different, but the meta governance group, um, also Primavera de Filippi, I would say, Matt, you probably have a lot of suggestions as well. Yeah, so there's, um, so uh, the, the Metagov project is, is an example. Um, yeah, Medic, thanks, Fanny. Uh, that, that's an example of a, of a, of a pretty, pretty sophisticated community of people thinking about, thinking about similar questions in, um, um, you know, sometimes similar, sometimes dissimilar ways, I would say. Um, there's also, um, you know, there's a lot of, of different groups of different sort of blockchain projects that I would say are, are, are like, um, are adjacent. I mean, sort of like a case by case in terms of like how similarly they're thinking about this. And, you know, in some cases, I think um, uh, governance communities are, 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 uh, are thinking about these problems in ways that are like kind of incompatible with our, with radical exchanges orientation, but, but not always. And it's sort of a complicated. Uh, so if some examples I would give are like, um, all right. So, so one that is, there, there's a kind of a, 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 a big cluster of, of blockchain governance uh, thinking um, uh, within and adjacent to the Gitcoin community. Um, uh, and, you know, and the sort of Ethereum community, you know, one degree away from the Gitcoin community um, that, uh, so there's a lot of, you know, uh, interesting projects uh, there that I could, I could kind of um, write to you about offline. I don't know if you're looking for sort of projects or more like communities. Um, uh, and, and another one is, is, you know, I was mentioning earlier, like the Decidim community um, is, you know, more center of gravity in Europe, but uh, very similar kind of civic tech focus. The Gov Zero community in, in Taiwan is uh, is is definitely uh, um, an, another example where I we're, we're working with them as sort of co-organizers for the Taiwan event actually, um, and um, yeah, I'm sure there's like three or four other great examples that I'm that I'm not coming up with on the spot here. But does that answer the question? Yeah, cool. Thanks. Yeah, I put a few uh, in the chat as well, but um, it's not absolutely comprehensive or um, you know, <laughs> like list of uh, uh, of uh, of that. But um, um, yeah, I mean, something that uh, we've obviously worked a lot with Gitcoin for like their quadratic funding, and uh, and it's very uh, aligned. I mean, Kevin has been a uh, the founder of Gitcoin has been a um, you know supporter uh, of um, uh, the foundation. Uh, Vitalik Buterin is at the board uh, of the of the foundation, uh, but one thing that's uh, very important uh, to us and that Alex and Matt have uh, shown with tools like Radical Exchange Voice is that uh, we're really trying to reach um, outside of the crypto community. Like we're not like looking at tools like just for uh, crypto people, like a DAO or like you know like things that are uh, reducive to like one. Uh, community so um, so yeah like it's uh, it's uh, it's it's quite hard as well to like uh, it's harder to um, um, you know think about tools that are more versatile and uh, not just crypto based there's another um, another thing I should mention is I don't know if you know like uh, uh, who Reese Lindmark uh, who, who runs a, a group called root um, uh, Reese is 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 a uh, interesting uh, thinker and he, who is kind of the the fulcrum of a of a closely adjacent community that we've we've had a lot of interaction with. There's you know there's adjacencies with um, 
uh, a effective altruism, things like that as well. Um, and, um, uh, and, and then I would also say that there are kind of on the, on the sort of other side of the same mountain, I think that we're working with sort of civil society organizations that are, that are adjacent, you know, and are kind of like less tech focused. So for example, we're, we're, um, uh, we are doing a consulting project right now alongside Demos Helsinki, uh, which is a, uh, like a leading civil society consultancy that also kind of runs a, runs a, a, a community interested in like good governance and stuff like that. Also kind of Europe focused. Um, uh, we're applying for a grant right now with a group called Coro, which is like a, um, has for a long time been doing kind of uh, um, community advancement uh, work and mentorship work for future civil society leaders. Um, and, you know, one kind of degree of separation out from that is, you know, um, uh, like community organizing uh, groups and stuff. So there's sort of, there's a, there's a, there are a bunch of, of adjacent communities that um that are sometimes don't overlap with that much with each other but are you know closely connected to to what to uh the radical exchange project in my view thanks matt like that was a uh a good overview of uh, of everything uh, you've been uh, uh working on so um one thing i i i must say is that there um, definitely a lot of um, um, like partnerships or like um, like pilot uh, experiments that uh, that we're really trying to uh, to do uh, with all these institutions, but uh, a lot of them are not very public or like make the headlines. So uh, so it's um, it's good that you gave an overview of uh, of all of that because yeah. You guys have been working very hard, so it's good that. Uh... Yeah. Also, like um, I'm, I'm now I'm, I'll, I'll just, Santa Fe plus one to that game B, um, uh, the, you know, cluster of people around uh, people like like um, like Jim Rutt, uh, Daniel Schmachtenberger. A lot of those folks are thinking in 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 similar in similar vein. Well, now we know like the next blog post you have to post because <laughs> yeah. it's very needed. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for your question. No problem. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it to 1 p.m. So, I mean, in New York, um, um, to the hour. So sorry for your 15 minutes that I promised, but uh, it was it was great. Like, I'm glad you uh, you added all these details. And uh, um, yeah, thank you uh, uh, for, uh, for this hour. And uh, we'll see you on Discord or by email. Until next time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.